Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing six of our all-time favorite Easter recipes with you. I've got two entrees, two side dishes, and two desserts, and these show up on our table every year for Easter. These are definitely family favorites. Today's video is also part of a collab hosted by Sammy from Manage in the Maze and Valerie from Valerie Hargett. I will have these ladies' channels as well as the collab playlist linked down in my description box below for you. So as soon as you're done watching my video, make sure that you check out the playlist for lots of yummy Easter recipes. First up, I'm gonna show you how I make my glazed ham. Now, when I make my glazed ham, I do it one of two ways. One, I'll either bake it in the oven or two, I'll put it in the crock pot. Just kind of depends on what side dishes, you know, I need to use the oven if I've got enough space for the ham or not. So today I'm gonna show you how I do it baked and it's gonna be part of a sheet pan dinner, which I'll have that full video linked in the description box below for you if you wanna see how I do the full sheet pan dinner. But like I said, I'll just walk you through making the glaze and how I make the ham in the oven. If you wanna do this in the crock pot, I just put, you know, the same glaze, the same ingredients in a crock pot. I like to use a crock pot liner just for easy cleanup and I either cook it on high for like four to six hours or on low for about eight hours you just want to make sure that you cook it all the way uh, most hams that you buy in the store um, will be pre-cooked but you just need to double check and make sure um, you know that if it's pre-cooked you're warming it up according to the package instructions and if it is not a cooked ham you know that again you're following the instructions first for the ham part I'm using a ham steak. Now this particular ham steak came with an apple cider glaze packet and you could totally use that if you want. I like to make my own glaze though. I like to add brown sugar, um, a little Dijon mustard, some honey, and then I'm using some pineapple slices for the ham and I'll use some of the juice from the can to make the glaze. And a quick note, because I'm doing the sheet pan dinner today, I'm using the ham steak, but normally if I'm baking this for Easter or for a family dinner, I'll use just like a regular ham roast. And normally for our family, which there are um, five adults and two teenagers who are practically adults, we normally do like a four to five pound ham and we typically have leftovers. You can use boneless or bone in, just depends on your preference. I'm going to go ahead and prep my ham. So here's the ham steak that I got. I got it on Markdown at Food Lion and I've had it in my freezer. I'm going to cut the ham up into smaller pieces, just into serving sizes. I think I got about six pieces of ham from this one ham steak. Now, I'm going to layer pineapple slices with the ham. So I just open that can and I'm going to put together my glaze real quick. So to this bowl, I'm going to add some brown sugar, the honey, Dijon mustard, and then some of the pineapple juice from the can of pineapple and I'm going to whisk it until it's combined really well. Now I didn't follow an exact recipe um, for the entire sheet pan dinner. Um, the potatoes I did use a recipe for, I've made that recipe several times before, but for this ham glaze, I'll try my best to include measurements in the description box below for you. All right, so that ham glaze is done. I'm gonna set that to the side and with a brush, I'm going to brush that glaze on both sides of my ham and just layer the ham slices with pineapple slices. Once I've got all my ham and pineapple out, I'm gonna take that brush and add just a little bit more of the glaze on top. So here's what our sheet pan looks like at this point. I'm going to place this into the preheated oven. Again, it was set at 400 degrees and I'm going to bake this for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I removed this from the oven. I gave the asparagus a little toss. I added some more of the glaze to the ham and pineapple. I added some of those Sister Schubert rolls. And then this is going to go back into the oven and I bake this for another 10 minutes. You just wanna make sure that you cook it according to your ham's package instruction. You wanna make sure that that ham is completely done. All right, here's the finished sheet pan dinner. Once this came out of the oven, I added a little chopped green onions to the top of the potatoes and I brushed the rolls with some butter. And next I'll show you our plates. Here are the plates. So we have some of the ham, the pineapple, the potatoes, the rolls, and the asparagus. This was delicious. So, so good. 
When I think about springtime meals, I always think about lamb. We love lamb, but we don't have it very often at all. Really, we only have it once a year around Easter because lamb can be really expensive. But luckily around Easter, it normally goes on sale. So I always watch the weekly ads and sale prices and try to get it, like I said, when it's on sale. So this week, Aldi had it. I grabbed one of the leg of lamb roasts. Let me show you how I made this. I removed this from the wrapper. Now mine had a net on it. If yours doesn't, you may want to secure it with some kitchen twine. And I forgot to mention this, but this is a boneless leg of lamb roast. I rubbed this with some olive oil. I seasoned it pretty generously with some salt, pepper, dried rosemary, dried thyme. And then I took a little paring knife. I cut some slits in the roast and I added in some garlic slivers. Then this is going to go into the preheated oven. I baked mine for about an hour. How long you bake your roast, it really depends on how big your roast is. And also it depends on how you like your lamb cooked. We like ours more medium rare. Um, but of course, if you like yours medium well or even well done, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'll include a link to a recipe that I kind of took inspiration from in the description box below. It has the temperatures and approximate cooking times um, listed in that. So I'll put that down in the description box. Here's the finished lamb roast. I allowed this to rest for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to remove the netting and slice it up. And here's the finished lamb and we do like ours more on the medium rare medium side but you can cook your lamb as long as you'd like and then i've got the mint jelly that i like to serve with the lamb here are the plates this lamb had so much flavor it was so tender it was delicious Next up, I'm making potato salad. I have made this so many times over my lifetime. I don't even know how to count, <laughs> but I never, never measure. I always just eyeball everything, but I did my best to measure for this video. We love this. It's a family favorite. Um, we have it for Thanksgiving. We have it for Easter. We have it for cookouts. My mom requests it like for her birthday and at different occasions. So I know that everyone has pretty much their own potato salad recipe that they love that either they came up with or their mom or grandma, but this is just how I make it, but absolutely customize this to whatever you and your family like. Here's what I like to use for my potato salad. I use onion, relish, yellow mustard, mayonnaise, some salt and pepper, and then I like to sprinkle a little paprika over the top, some hard boiled egg, and then of course the potatoes. To get started, I've peeled and washed my potatoes. I cut them into about half inch, three quarter inch cubes, and then I've placed them into cold water. I bring that up to a boil, and then I boil that until the potatoes are done. It normally takes about 10 minutes, depending on how big I cut them, but you'll just wanna make sure that you check them. Once they're cooked all the way through, I'm going to drain them and rinse them with cold water. I like to mix up everything except the potatoes in a bowl before I add them. That's just a personal preference. So in this large mixing bowl, I'm going to add in my mayonnaise and I used about three and a half pounds of potatoes and I added about a cup of mayonnaise. Then I'm going to add in my mustard. I added about a tablespoon and a half. Then I'm going to add in my relish and I added about two tablespoons. Then I'm going to season this with some salt and pepper. You'll just do this to taste. And again, like I said earlier, you can absolutely customize this with whatever your family likes. Next, I'm going to add in my onion. I like to cut my onion very, very finely. And I'm going to add in my chopped hard boiled eggs and then mix that together really well. You'll want to make sure to give this a taste and see, you know, if you want to add a little bit more mustard or a little bit more relish or whatever you'd like. Once that's mixed together and it's where I want it, I'm going to add in my potatoes and mix that together. And then I'm going to sprinkle that with some paprika and that's it. That's the potato salad. For the quantity of potatoes that I use, this easily feeds about six people, but you can absolutely double this recipe. This is another thing that I have made pretty much my entire life. I make my deviled eggs and potato salad the way that my granny did and that my mom does. And this is another family favorite. We have these for Thanksgiving, for Easter, for cookouts, different occasions. We love these. But just like with the potato salad, you can absolutely customize this to whatever you and your family like. So let me share with you the things that I use for my deviled eggs. I use hard boiled eggs, yellow mustard, salt and pepper, mayonnaise, relish, 
and paprika. Now, I like to use sweet relish for my deviled eggs and potato salad, but if you prefer dill relish, you can absolutely use that. If you don't have relish, you can just use pickles and chop those up. To get started, I've taken my hard-boiled eggs and I have sliced them in half. I'm just going to add the yolks to this bowl and then place the white back onto my dish. To make my hard-boiled eggs, I know everyone kind of has their own preferred way. I add my eggs to cold water, bring it up to a boil. Once it's at a rolling boil, I boil them for 10 minutes exactly. I remove them from the hot water and place them into cold water and then peel them and they turn out perfect every time. I'm going to take a fork and mash up my yolks. You could also do this in a food processor, but I just use a fork. I used six eggs for this recipe, and to that I added about three tablespoons of mayonnaise, about a tablespoon of mustard, two tablespoons of relish, and again, do this to your taste. And then I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper and mix that together really well. Next, I'm going to fill my eggs. You can fill your eggs using a pastry bag. If you don't have a pastry bag, you could just use a Ziploc bag, add your filling, and then just snip off the end and do it that way. If I were taking these to a potluck or to like a family reunion or something like that, I do use um, a pastry bag, but this was for my mom's birthday. So I'm just going to fill these with a spoon and then sprinkle them with some paprika and that's it. The deviled eggs are done. And here are the finished deviled eggs. These are so, so good. I'm going to share my recipe for a lemon bundt cake. I love this cake. It's so good and really moist. Here are the ingredients that you'll need and I will include the recipe in the description box below with the amounts. You'll need powdered sugar, vegetable oil, a yellow cake mix and just use your favorite brand. This one from Great Value is a really great price and it's delicious. You'll need some cooking spray or butter or something to grease your bundt pan really well, water, lemon extract, lemon juice, eggs, and then a box of instant lemon pudding. To get started, I've preheated my oven according to the instructions on my cake mix. Now I'm going to empty the cake mix into a mixing bowl. Then I'm going to add my pudding mix and then taking a whisk, I'm just going to mix that together a little bit. Then I'm going to add in my water, then the vegetable oil, and then the lemon extract. Now I'm going to add in my eggs. Now I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. I started out by using my whisk to break up those egg yolks and then I switched over to a spatula. Once that's well combined, I'm going to pour this into my prepared bunt pan. Now with the bunt pan, you really wanna make sure that you grease it really, really well. I'm using some spray Baker's Joy. You can use cooking spray or butter or flour. Again, just make sure that you do a really good thorough job of greasing that pan. Now I'm going to place this into my preheated oven and cook it according to my cake mix instructions. And you wanna make sure that a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. And here's the cake out of the oven. I'm going to allow it to cool for a few moments before I turn it out onto a cake plate. And as the cake is cooling, I'm going to start on the icing. So in this bowl, I'm just adding in my powdered sugar and then I'm going to add in my lemon juice. Now with the lemon juice, you can use fresh juice if you like. I always like to use the one in the bottle though because fresh lemons, the acidity in them can really vary. You can have super, super tart lemons or lemons that really aren't so tart. So just for consistency sake, I like using the bottled stuff, but you can use fresh if you'd prefer. You just might wanna taste it and add a little bit more sugar if it's needed. So I'm going to mix that icing together really well. And then this is super easy. You're just going to drizzle this over the top of the cake. And here is the finished cake. This is so good. To me, it's even better the next day. This is really quick and easy to put together. And I love it because when you slice into this cake, it's a really pale yellow, which I think is perfect for Easter or springtime. Next up, I'm making my mom's banana pudding recipe. This is so quick and easy to put together and it's super delicious. 
First, you'll need some vanilla wafers. You could also use some of the Chessman cookies for this. I know Paula Deen's recipe calls for that. The other day I was at Target and they have a special edition of the Chessman cookies out, their springtime edition. They were really cute. They have like little tulips and different designs on them. So if you can find those, that would be super festive to do for Easter. You'll also need some Cool Whip. This is just the off-brand version. I have thawed this. You'll need some milk. Of course, you'll need bananas for your banana pudding. And then I'm using some banana instant pudding mix. If you can't find the banana, you can also just use vanilla. To get started, I have this large mixing bowl here. I'm going to add in my milk and then add in my instant pudding mixes and whisk that together really well. And then I'm going to set that aside for just a few moments while I slice up my bananas and get everything else ready. And just that couple minutes that it sits aside, it will get nice and thick for you. Next, I'm going to slice up my bananas and set those aside. Once my pudding has had a chance to thicken up a little bit, I'm going to stir in my thawed container of whipped topping, and then I'm just going to mix that together really well until I can't see any more streaks of white. Now that I've got all my components ready, I'm going to start constructing the actual pudding. So in this serving container, I'm going to add just a little bit of my pudding, then some vanilla wafers, then a layer of bananas, and then a layer of pudding, and then I'm just going to repeat that. So you'll want to do pudding, wafers, bananas, pudding, and continue. Now with banana puddings, there's so many different recipes on how to make banana pudding and there's many different ways. You have more of what I call the old fashioned way, which is making your custard with egg yolks and then using the egg whites to make a meringue. There are recipes similar to like what Paula Deen does where you add sweetened condensed milk and cream cheese. And then there's ways like I'm making today where you just use box instant pudding mix and uh, Cool Whip. All of the ways are delicious. I've had them pretty much every which way. I love banana pudding. It's one of my favorite desserts, but this is the way that I like it. Now, that doesn't mean that that's necessarily your and your family's favorite, but I encourage you try different recipes, see which way you all prefer. I do have a recipe that I will include in the description box below for like the old fashioned version where you do make the custard and the meringue. And so I'll link it down there just in case you want to try it. But again, just try different ways and see what you and your family's favorite way is. Like I said, this is my favorite. It's so quick and easy and it's really delicious. Here's the finished banana pudding. And then here is a serving of it. It's so light and fluffy. I highly recommend you give this and the lemon cake a try. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this gave you some new recipes or things to try for your upcoming Easter celebration or just the springtime in general. These make great springtime meals, side dishes, desserts, summer, Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever celebration you've got or occasion, these would be perfect. And remember, don't forget to go check out the collab playlist link down in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.